Howdy everyone. Hey. So if you're wondering where we're at now, we've moved further east back towards Little Rock because we still need to be here because we're constantly having phone calls and dealing with things on the H3. Mm -hmm. We have a good feeling she might be healthy here soon. What is the update on it? Because you told me they've replaced some parts. They took the wheel and took the wheel off. The wheel, the wheel's completely totaled. They have a whole entire new knuckle assembly with the upper and lower control arms in hub. We figured out we needed a new shock. New shock. Called. Yeah, new shock. So they had we did we're not expecting that. Of course, like we said, we knew there was gonna be things that we didn't know till they got in there, so they had to order a shock. Um, and all the cosmetic stuff, the fender, yeah. the front plastic bumper. All that's been ordered. That's all been ordered off eBay and it because it's it's a used vehicle, they don't make it anymore. It's the mm -hmm. only place you can find these parts. So they've all been shipped to the location. So we are pretty much ready to go. Which I'm very happy that we have an old vehicle because everybody, and I know y'all said some comments too. I've had some friends even tell me they have friends that had car wrecks and they've just been waiting for parts to come in because On newer they have brand new vehicles. Yeah. So it works in our favor that, and anybody else right now in this time, if you have an older vehicle, it's just salvage or the parts have been made years ago and they're just sitting in a warehouse somewhere ready to be shipped off. So that is a, a very good thing yeah. for an older vehicle. So Until there's no more parts. We then might we just buy day. more H3s and we, uh, we have our own salvage yard. <laughs> Kelly really does not want to get rid of H3. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. I want to just buy a slew of H3s and just have a yard to just set them all in. and <laughs> A slew of H3s. Well, anywho... We are, like we said, just east, or sorry, just west of Little Rock, uh, about 30 minutes in the Winona area of the Washita National Forest. So today we want to take y'all to one of our favorite short hikes. I mean, very short, but beautiful views. I believe we vlogged it before. It's been a couple years ago. We did a mountain bike ride at Northwoods and then came back and did this for a sunset. Yeah. And it's hand down the best view in Arkansas. It overlooks flat side wilderness. Mm -hmm. It has no man-made objects. It's all natural scenery, no power lines, no towers, nothing. Not a single man-made thing. And its sunsets are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's called Flat Side Pinnacle. And it's not Pinnacle by Little Rock. Yeah. It is its own pinnacle. Mm -hmm. So that was the plan today. We're going to take y'all there. And then of course I'm going to cook dinner later. And she's cooking something that she's made before, but she hasn't made before. Not out camping. I have not made it before. It is a pizza. I will give you this, but it is a completely different pizza mm -hmm. that she hasn't made camping before. Yep. It has a different base. Not tomato, not Alfredo. But let's go up to Flatside. Is that where we're heading? Yeah, let's go get a view. We'll see you there. Even though this is a short hike, it is a little strenuous. It is basically almost all straight up and a lot of loose rock and gravel so if you want to come do this you can it's beautiful it's worth it but it isn't just a little flat easy trail just fyi also don't worry about us getting shot i know we don't have an orange this is a very well traveled trail so there's not going to be any hunters around here shooting towards this area. I know people get really worried about this time of year. Uh, and another thing, this is a part of the Washita Hiking Trail that starts in Oklahoma. Star, sorry, starts at Pinnacle Mountain State Park and ends 50 miles in Oklahoma. This is a part of it with the spur off to the beautiful overlook. And I think that's all I want to say. Hmm. Okay. So this little area, I'm gonna say, is your halfway mark. Right behind me is the Washita Trail Cody was talking about. Which ends up going that direction, which we just came off of. Yeah, so this is where we came from. We're heading this way, right up there. But this is a good stopping point if you're on the Washita Trail to camp. Also, if you wanted to just walk, hike in here and camp, I mean, you could do that. There's two fire pits, there's plenty of room. Probably a five minute hike from the parking lot. Yeah, I haven't even like broken a wind, the more been winded yet and broken a wind. The more, uh, <laughs> the more. So the more strenuous part is coming up. We're here. 
it's so pretty. I wish the colors were changed more in the leaves so y'all could see it. Yeah, so, you know, I've told y'all quite often about how the Washitals are one of, or they are the only mountain range in North America that runs east to west. And this is a perfect place to see how that works. All the north slopes, like that little slope right there, that slope has nothing but hard oaks on it. But if you look right where the valley starts going up, that's all pines. And you're starting to see a little bit of color change right there. Is that Forked Mountain? Yeah, way out there is Forked Mountain. Wow. And this whole entire wilderness, all this behind me, is named after this mountain that we're on, Flatside Pinnacle. It's Flatside Wilderness. But during the peak of fall, which we're, I think next week's gonna be the peak of fall. And that's when we're hosting the fall in the nature, so we won't be able to be out here to see it. But you're gonna see bands of fall colors, like that whole entire mountain ridge right there is all hard oaks or hard woods of different varieties of different species. And it's gonna be just reds and yellows. And then right at the base where it starts coming up the next mountain, green because of all the pines. It is so amazing to see. Now you're telling all the people to come out here instead of the fall in the nature event. Okay, don't come out here. Come, come to the fall in nature event, then come out here. Is that not gorgeous? One of the best views in Arkansas, in my opinion. And this is a great location to see the geology. I mean, you can literally see where the rocks are almost vertical, where they got pushed up with the collision of South America. Is that not awesome? Look at that, right there. Before we get back to camp, I just realized this is also another perfect example of showing y'all how much different the north side to the south sides of these mountain ridges are. If you notice when we were on the south side facing the sun it was a lot of pines and it was real dry and arid almost a desert feeling and then you come over here on the north side where it hardly gets any sun during the winter it gets more in the summer so that the plants can grow but these will all die and it'll be nothing but hardwoods look it's nothing but hardwoods all here and there's tons of moss really thick moss on the north sides just like a tree north side of a tree we're having camp now is on the north side of a ridge so everything around us is oaks and other types of hardwoods just thought it's pretty neat We are back, we are clean, we are mean, not really, but Kelly's about to start cooking something. Where are you cooking, babe? He's so weird. Uh, so I'm gonna make a pizza, but it's a different pizza. Like you said earlier, it is going to be provolone cheese, pesto base sauce, um, uh, mushrooms, I have to think, mushrooms and red onion, caramelized onion. You know I love caramelized onion. First thing we got to do, get the dough going. That takes an hour to rise. And while we're waiting on the dough, we're going to get a fire going so we have good coals.
So if you notice my new kitchen knife, this chef's knife is from Cascadia Cutlery and they are our new sponsor. If you notice any knives that we'll be using from now on will be from that company. And this knife is bad to the bone. Ooh, ooh, Let ooh. me tell you. Balance it. I'm, I'm so scared. Oh, I'll do it this way. Perfectly balanced. And it's real Damascus. I have never seen real Damascus still in my life until then. I've always seen the fake printed on stuff. This is the real deal. So if you like knives, you need to check out their website, Cascadia Cutlery. We will put all the information in the description below and their logo here so you can check it out. And he sent me a Benchmade. Is that not nice? Kelly's hardcore too. Kelly, where's your knife? Got one too. It's she got a Benchmade. <laughs> She had it on her hip earlier, telling me that she wanted to be cool I did, too. But my pocket was pushing it out. Look at that. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. I keep it close by. So there's her knife. Reason I took this one is because it's a uh, wood, real wood grain. Isn't that nice? And the blade is thick and solid here. Check that out. Of course, you know anything bench made if you're aware of knives is, is a great product. Handier in pockets on a shirt, I tell you what. You want to know one of my favorite sounds in the world? It just started. You hear that? That coming from that direction? I'm not gonna lie, that is the one thing I missed out west was hearing coyotes. We didn't hear coyotes, it was weird. We heard them one time and it didn't sound like our coyotes here. It sounded a little different. Where were we? It's kind of yuppie. Yeah, it was like a, we first thought it was a pack of just like dogs. And then I was like, we were like, no, that's coyotes, and not dogs. But not, not Arkansas coyotes. And they're done. Just as fast as they started. Wait. The party continues. <laughs> they just started. Oh. They're just now already. It might get louder here in a minute. We have never had a coyote in camp. Never. I've never. never even seen one. We always hear them in Arkansas, but never seen one. And we've, the only thing we've ever had in camp, besides a tarantula. <laughs> Raccoons. Raccoons, but that was before we started putting things away in our uh, vehicle. Or we had a friend that would just leave stuff out. <laughs> we did have a friend. He had a big block of butter. And uh, 
I know it sounds weird, but it was a massive jo- block of butter, and he, he put. Didn't even use that butter. He used it for his uh, hash. He did like a scrambled hash. <laughs> the block. <laughs> it was. It was the size of. I mean, it was. I didn't know they sold blocks of butter. I didn't either. Like and one solid brick. It was like a brick of butter. <laughs> he had a, a ice chest, like a little handheld ice chest he brought with him, and it, it, that thing took up a half of the ice chest. Or cooler, I guess you'd call it. But it had a zipper closure. And then on top, it had a Velcro door. Oh, no, it was Velcro. I'm sorry. It had like the zipper closure and a Velcro door. And a raccoon opened up the Velcro door. And, and they were after it. It was by our tent. And we looked in there. I remember him there. like hitting the tent. <laughs> <laughs> so besides that, it's been a long, long time since we've... Uh, had anything in camp, really. Yeah. Oh, and black bears. When we first started camping, we had black bears in camp, and we don't have black bears anymore because, once again... We put things away. Everything goes so in the trailer. don't be afraid to come out here, guys. All you have to do is just put your stuff away. You put your food away. Don't put it in your tent. Put it in a metal something like your, your vehicle or back in your trailer. Don't leave ice chests out because it's oh, just... Oh, trash bags. They can get the ice chest, too. It's just not... Cookers, anything you cook with, your ovens, your stove, put that up. Your trash, put that up. If you're backpacking, you string everything in a tree. Um, yeah. 100, 100 yards away from where you're sleeping at. Yeah. Since we've done that, we've never had anything in our camp. So please don't let the tarantula uh, incident in yeah, last week's vlog freak you out. Time. Like Cody kept telling everybody, like, you'll never meet anybody that had tarantula in their pants ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will never know anyone else in the world that will ever say that they had a tarantula crawl up their pants. Not willingly, because I know there's people that has a, have pet tarantulas, and they could probably make that happen just to prove a point. But I'm saying, not willingly, have a tarantula crawl up your pants in the wild. Yeah, for sure. Probably won't ever happen again. Ooh. I think it's good. What do you think? Oh, it's hot. That looks delicious. Oh, I can't wait. After we pull the pizza off the fire, I like to let it rest for about five minutes. No more than that because it will get cold out here. If you do not let it rest, in my opinion, when you start cutting it, all the toppings fall off. So it's good to let it rest for a few minutes. But it's been five minutes, so now it's time to cut. Alright, time to eat. Yum! Can't wait. And that's solid.
We've got the boats in the back of the truck because we want to take y'all somewhere that we enjoy. It's very beautiful. It's very quiet. There is a campground there and a big body of water. So we're going to take you guys there and show you. Welcome to Lake Sylvia. This is not far from town, Little Rock, and it is a very nice place to come hang out for the day. During the summertime, it gets a little busier because this is a swimming hole right over there that I'm gonna go actually lay out over there. Right now, you cannot technically swim in the water, but we are, well, Cody's gonna put his boat out. We brought mine, but I think I might just lay out. I'm gonna do some yoga first right here, and Cody's gonna go fishing. And then this lake I wanted to tell you is very, very low right now because it is completely rain dependent. So you'll see, I'm looking this way and it looks like there's not even supposed to be water there. So all of that should have water in it. And in the spring, early spring, it is very, very full, but the water is still very soft. It's very clean. And this is just a really beautiful place. So if you are not familiar with it and you live in Little Rock, you should come check it out. It is very peaceful, especially this time of year and very beautiful just to come and relax and do yoga, maybe do some fishing. So yeah, I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, this area behind me is the swimming area. So like I said, in the summertime, it gets really busy here. The campground is over this way and um, the swimming hole gets really busy, but like it is October right now. No, yes, today is the last day of October. Uh, there's hardly, and there's nobody out here. Swim beach is closed. There's a diving platform, but this is the beach where I'm gonna lay out and people probably think I'm crazy because I'm in a bathing suit, but you know, being out west all summer, this was summertime in Montana, Colorado. So I didn't really get to lay out much there. So I'm gonna take advantage of it and lay out because it's a beautiful day. So that is the rock feature that uh, they built the dam at. I think this creek is called Narrow Creek. It flows out of this and goes into the Maumelle River that goes into Lake Maumelle. But this is where I want to try to fish at. It's in this deeper, cooler place. It's a little shallow over there. I've seen a lot of fish jumping, like brim. Probably more than likely what it is, but I got a good feeling. So we've actually made it to the spillway and there sounds like there's actually water kind of coming through the lake. So I'm wondering if there is a leak in the dam. Let's see what we can find out.
right, so we got a three today, and Kelly has gotten herself a tan because that's the way she likes to roll it on a beautiful, relaxing day. But we're about to go back to camp and get ready for dinner. Welcome back to Kelly's Forest Kitchen, where Kelly's about to kill something, not an animal, but she's about to kill it with cooking. What are you cooking, babe? Uh, so I'm making a... I was kind of toying with the name, either three cheese rigatoni or just adult mac and cheese because that's really all it is. Like we've got the three cheeses, we've got Gruyere, we've got cheddar and mascarpone. We haven't made this in a long time because it was really hard to find mascarpone cheese out west. Like I could not find it anywhere. Any grocery store we went to could never find it. But here in Little Rock, Kroger continuously has it. Uh, we're gonna cut up some onion, uh, chop that up, saute it in some butter and um, cream and all the good bad stuff for you. So, mm, I yeah. love good and bad it stuff. It bakes in the oven in the pan. So. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna cook this package directions. I wanna do al dente, so it says 12 to 14 minutes. Al dente would be 12 minutes because I am going to bake it. So we're just gonna do 12 minutes on the pasta. Once this is boiling, once this is hot, I'm gonna throw in some butter, oil, salt, onions, and then we'll do the, chop the garlic. Go in with my onion, and I still don't think I'm gonna use all of it that I've got here. Maybe like that much. A little bit of salt. This is boiling, so I'm gonna throw in my noodles. Garlic time into the noodles. I mean noodles, why do I keep saying that? <laughs> no idea what I'm talking about. All right, throw that in. Let that cook for just a minute, and then we're gonna add in some flour. So now that my garlic is cooked, I'm gonna add in some flour. I'm gonna do four tablespoons and I'm going to make a roux. So to make a roux, I've got all my butter. I put five tablespoons of butter. So I've got a lot of butter plus some oil and we're just gonna stir it all around until it becomes thick and golden colored. So it is golden in color now, and you can tell it's a little thicker. So I'm going to throw in my milk is what I have here. That was two cups of milk. And I'm gonna turn my burner up a little bit, and we're just gonna continue to stir. So I've stirred my milk around for a couple of minutes. Just kind of getting everything combined, scraping off any bits at the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to add in the mascarpone cheese. And I'm not really measuring it. I'm just gonna do about that much. So this is a really oily cheese. So it, it's gonna make it an oily based um, sauce. Well, kind of. I mean, it's, you'll see. It's just pretty oily. It's an oily cheese. And then we have our cheese that we mixed together at the beginning. And we're going to throw that in here. Now, I'm not going to put all of it. Since my pan is so small, I'm going to do a little bit and then kind of stir it in. So really, we're just going to get it to all melt and thicken up. Oh, it smells good. Get a little more cheese. Mm. And just a pinch more, and I'm going to save the rest of the cheese to go on top before I bake. And I actually just turn my burner off. Once this all melts, I think it's going to be good to go. So I got ahead of myself, and I forgot to put salt, pepper, and nutmeg in the sauce. Yeah, I do that sometimes. So I'm just gonna put it in here and stir it around. I've already put some nutmeg in there. You just spot it. Yeah. Usually with the nutmeg, you don't need a whole bunch. We're gonna transfer the noodles into this plate and I'm gonna use parchment paper 
just so it's kind of an easy cleanup later. We might eat all that. Oh yeah, we're gonna eat all that. And we've got the other cheese that we did not put in. I know y'all, it's a lot of cheese. And then, breadcrumbs. So this is a brand I like to use. And I love some breadcrumbs, so I'm just gonna go heavy on it. Cause I love it, I love that crunch. Now it's ready to bake, we got 400, which is a little much. Turn it down, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. And hopefully it doesn't burn the paper too bad up there at the tip top like that. All right, and then let's time it. Let's do like 20 minutes and then we'll check it after that. Is that good? I think it's good. What do you think? I think that's heaven on earth right there. I think it's that right there. Okie dokie. On this or up here? Mm -hmm. Look at that yummer. I'd buy that for a dollar. Cannot wait to eat this. A little salt and pepper. It's money. If you're wondering what the uh, mark on the forehead is, that's the old Olight headlamp so I can take care of chores around here. Oh, and the food. Guess what? We she, ate it all. <laughs> she ate it before I did. I almost gave up. And she said, we don't let me all. outdo you. I was just was so full, but I wanted the flavor. However, we are going to enjoy this fire for the rest of the night. We're going to call it, but we will catch you on the other. See you next time.